A lot of times people think Jumaah is just an opportunity to save yourself from hell, so I go to Juma, so I don't go to hell. It's an opportunity to be reminded. That's why, you know, some people come, they sleep, and I, I always say this, they just, we just have no respect for the Juma. Do you know there's a big beadab in Juma? You know, if it was not insultive, I would pick out people who fall asleep, who lay down against the wall. Listen, Juma is astaghfirullah. You know, last two nights ago, I were in a class, and I was telling the students, you are not supposed to even sit in Juma and take a tasbih and say, subhanallah, subhanallah, subhanallah. Your dhikr is listening to the khutbah. So how could you sleep? Do you understand the fiqh, Brother Shami? The law of the Juma khutbah is that you're not supposed to even sit down and say, Subhanallah, Allahu Akbar. The Prophet wasallam says, keep your tongue busy in dhikr. Or you could say, well, the hadith says I should keep my tongue busy in dhikr, so I'm making dhikr. The dhikr of the Juma is, and the khutbah is to listen to the khutbah. Why do you think there are so many laws? Do you know the law of praying to sunnah? And I'm just cutting from the Bismillah here because i got to remind myself and remind you this all the time. Because I see people, I don't know if you take sleeping tablets when you come here, or you're just sick, or what it is. If you're sick, go to the hospital. And I had a principal, and I'm sorry to say that. It had a student, every time he sits in class, he's sleeping. Teacher asked him, the teacher, the teacher asked him, what's wrong with you? But he said, I'm not feeling well. He said, well, go to the hospital. This is a class to learn, it's not a place to sleep. I'm sorry to be so harsh, you know. You know, Brother Azad, you have a sign outside saying no eating. You should also put no sleeping. Do you know the two rakat that you pray when you come into a masjid? Tahiyatul masjid? That has become a big fiqh jurisprudence law. Why is it a law? The A'imma, Imam Shafi, Imam Hanbal, Imam Malik, Imam Hanifa. They have volumes written and differences on reading Turaqat Salah when you come into the masjid when the khutbah is going on. Imam Abu Hanifa says, not at all. As long as the khutbah begins, you don't read Turaqat Tahiyatul Masjid. You enter the masjid and you sit and listen to the khutbah. Because more important than the nafil, the khutbah is wajib to listen to. You see the fiqh brothers? Huh? So how could you sleep? If you cannot allow... To pray to Rakat Salah, which is a sunnah, Tahiyatul Masjid, then how are you going to be allowed to sleep? Does that make sense, bro? You know, that's why we in Darulum here, the khutbahs are class, you know. It's not about coming here to make up time and waste time. I tell people, if you come here to waste time, mashallah, you could waste time in a lot of other places. Don't waste my time and waste your time. Imam Shafi, however, says, and on one hadith, in which the Prophet ﷺ, so I'm giving you both, Bithnillah, that one man came in the masjid and he was praying to Rakat Tahetul Masjid and he prayed did, 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 like a peacock, a chicken. And he went down, he got up, he went down, he got up. And the Prophet ﷺ told him to repeat your salah. You follow? Repeat your salah. So the fuqaha derived from this that if the Prophet ﷺ told him to repeat your salah, it meant that it is permissible to pray the turakat tur when you enter the masjid. And whether the khutbah is going on, you could pray your turakat. One, mazhab says, no. One says, as long as the khutbah begins, yes, you don't pray the salah. You come early and pray the turakat. The other one says, yes, you could pray it, but you don't pray 40 rakats. How many do you pray? Huh? See? Tell me. During the khutbah, you can't stand there and pray two rakats, two rakats, two rakats, four two rakats, four rakats. Why? Because you are not supposed to do that during the khutbah. So how could you sleep, brother? Lean against the wall, relax, think it's, I'm here in the restaurant, man. In the movie theater. Or somewhere in a theater or cinema. No, you know, this is a disease I see happening and that's a shaitanic thing when shaitan play with our hearts and our minds. And sometimes I have to be very harsh to remind myself and you of this. We don't understand it. 
What I'm saying is that the Fukaha have debated whether you pray to rakats or don't pray to rakats because it's wajib to listen to the khutbah. You see the point I'm getting at? So one says it's permissible, which yes, unanimously. The other, from amongst the, the, some of the, 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 the Fukaha from the Hanafi madhab, they say, okay, if you have to pray it, and a guy is listening to the khutbah, don't go stand in front of him and put your butt in his face while he's concentrating on the khutbah. Let's put it as raw as it is and physical as it is. You don't stand in front of him and come and disturb him and distract him from concentrating and listening. Go to the side, go in the back, go in the, somewhere, pray your turakat and join them. Look at him. See, see what I'm saying? You know, it took years to study these things. There are a lot of details. A lot of us practice an Islam of a monkey see, monkey do. What we just see people doing, and we don't even understand. The point I'm getting at here, if to pray two rakats Allah, which is sunnah, and which the Prophet says to do, has so much ikhtilaf and conflict, whether you should do it during the khutbah or not, what about sleeping? Does that exist? <laughs> huh? Two rakats is so controversial. Sleeping? And I see people do that all these days. Sometimes I wish I could put some nails against the walls. The people don't lean up and get lazy because then Satan says, So Jaobai, sleep, sleep. Aram Koro, take a rest. You relax. You need to rest. It gets a susti, a lackadaisical laziness. And that's what Shaitan does to us. And I, I'm sorry to say that, but you know what? I don't want you to have to. I, I, it's about me on the day of judgment. I don't want Allah to ask me. That I did not remind the believers that even when you leaned against a wall and you fall asleep, your wudu is broken. Do you know that fiqh law? Then you have no juma salah. Forget about the khutbah. Khutbah is gone because you were sleeping. You lean against a wall and you fall asleep. Your wudu is broken. You don't even have the salah when you get up to pray. And I had to take that five minutes because sometimes I see this happening all the time. And I thought I remind you because, you know, I can't do this when I go to other masjids in America and do khutbahs because they are my guest. So I have to be a nice boy. So I speak nice things. Oh, the lullabies. <laughs> so they could invite me again, inshallah. But home oh, here, this is my responsibility to remind myself and remind you. Otherwise, I will have to answer on the day of judgment that you didn't tell the people that when they lean against something and they fall asleep, their wudu is broken and they have no salah. So therefore, the prevention is not a lean back, sit attentively unless you're sick. People who are sick, people who are lame, people who have a, a, an excuse of physical illness, mashallah, you're exempted. That's the law, all right? And sometimes I want, because it kind of is a little sickening to me and it disturbs me sometimes, Brother Azad. So you need to walk around with something and put a sign on you and say, no sleeping to everybody, Brother Azad. So nobody sleeps, inshallah.